going? Glad to see you. Yeah. Nice to be back. Yeah. Been a while. Been a little bit. Um, okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order then. Um, is everyone present? And um, I'll take um, just, a, just a moment um, to introduce our newest member to the board, Jerry Kramer. Um, who I was, um, I was saying she had joined a couple of our meetings in the summer and she liked what she saw, I guess. So she decided to come join us. That's great. Welcome. That's great. Happy Welcome. to have you. Welcome. Thank you. I look forward to learning and helping however I can. Great. All right. Thank you. We're all in that boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Right. And then, um, Rick, can we congratulate you on, on having been sworn in as a full member? Is that right? Yes, that's right. That's Congratulations. Right. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, yay. Oh, oh, and I see Dan is joining us. Oh, good. Hey, Dan. Okay. Um, so we start with public comment, but I see no members of the public. Is so it Allison? Allison? Is she, oh, she's not from the public. No, sorry. Hi, Allison. Oh, that's okay. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? Um, so Allison is Allison uh, was kind enough to join us for our, our next item, which is the public health needs assessment that we've been discussing, the internal assessment. Um, and um, let's see. At our last meeting, uh, we worked through uh, a draft scope, and Jean uh, shared that with Allison and. Um, we had a conversation about that. I don't know if, if Jean or Allison, one of you wants to, to talk about what we talked about, fill the board in on where we are with this. Yeah, I'll just um, say thank you, Allison. She, Allison is the um, procurement officer for the town of Reading. So we always like to start with Allison. Okay. We're going down the right road. That's yes. right. <laughs> it's probably a little overkill, but. Um, uh, because this this is under 30b it doesn't require much of a process but um but but the the challenge here is going to be even though 30b the procurement act doesn't require all kinds of fancy processes for um, getting prices we want to have a way to um, make a decision that's going to be fair and justifiable <laughs> um, whatever that decision whoever the firm is or the individual is that gets selected so we want to have a defensible um, set of criteria that um, can be applied. So, um, so Allison was nice enough to um, talk to Carrie and I about um, some ideas for how you get there in a way that will be as simple as possible. Um, and I, I don't want to, I'm sorry, Jean, I don't want to interrupt. I just want to ask really quick before we get too far in, are we recording? Did we remember to record or is RCTV playing? Uh, RCTV is here, yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry. That is a good reminder. I appreciate it. And I will hit the record button. There we go. Um, so yeah, so we we um, we we were able to get together with Allison, uh, Carrie, and myself, and lay out a strategy for the best way to go about um, defining a scope for the internal assessment. And this is uh, the scope that we discussed, which is basically to look at the health division and um, look at some of the metrics and determine um, kind of where, we are, where we're at, where we could use a little help, um, what's the pluses and minuses, um, what, what are some things we should be paying attention to, um, maybe some workflow items that uh, we wanna take a look at. And then um, we also talked about the standards for excellence and talked about being, becoming a certified um, health department. So, um, so there are a lot of nice um, goals in there baked in to um, see how we can move forward. So that's essentially what we talked about. And I will see if Allison can um, talk procurement for us, which I know is so exciting. <laughs> so exciting on a Thursday night. Um, that's so necessary. <laughs> this um, project um, I believe your budget will be under $10,000, so you can move forward with whatever um, you think is in the best interest of your business. I will say, though, you, um, from what I've gathered, you're looking for 
a consultant to come in and give you some advice and look at your practices and protocols. So the more you can think of in your scope that you want them to deliver and, and write it down, then um, the better product you'll get back from the consultant. Mm -hmm. um, I'm totally happy to send this out to any firms that you want me to send it out to and to track your responses and submit the responses to the um, Board of Health. Thank you. That's great. Um, so I know that we, um, what we, what was in the scope um, was, um, you know, discussion of, you know, reviewing of, of files and, and as compared to requirements under, for under chapter 111, um, you know, benchmarking with the 10 essential services um, and benchmarking with um, what, what would be, a, Rick had a nice in, it, addition of sort of what would it take to, um, have Reading be able to be a um, accredited uh, health department under FAB, under the, the Public Health Accreditation Board. Um, and that those those are, so we, we did set up some nice benchmarks. And I guess what we didn't do is we didn't um, specify specific content that we, we wanted to see. To my mind, you know, we want a, 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 a report. Um, I wanted to include information of kind of who exactly we expect them to be talking with so that they can estimate properly on um, time for interviews and, and the like. And I wanted us to, to be in agreement of, of who folks ought to be talking to. To me, that would be um, department staff and then members of the board. And um, it, it seems to me it would be Bob and Bob Lulasher and Jean. Um, and I and beyond that, I, I you know I don't know um, what other thoughts might might be, or if there are any thoughts on that list. Carrie, you had um, you had put together a rough draft of uh, that we saw at the last meeting, mm -hmm. and I don't know has any um, additional work been done on that rough draft because I know you were going to pass it on, and I think. I don't know who was gonna maybe work on it to clean it up uh, to see where it stands now. Is there any, has there been any more um, updating of that, do you know, or Allison? Yeah, so I can tell you that um, Jean and I have worked on your initial draft. Um, I tried to put it in a format that, so it would look just as it would as if you were sending it out to your vendors. Um, I think I incorporated all your changes and I'm happy to send it out um, again to the board and anyone to get feedbacks. Um, I tried also, it, you don't need everything that's required in the document that I'm writing, but I was trying to help um, you or the committee or whoever's going to be looking at these proposals and determine who, who they wanted to move forward um get all the same information back in the same type of format from the proposes so that you would be looking at apples or yep. um, right. and everybody would be submitting the same type of thing overall what we were looking for um is a table of contents a profile from the company what specific consultants they would be they would be using within their firm because you don't want them to send you these lovely resumes, but then switch and use a different type of a firm. Um, my understanding is you would wanted this complete by December 31st. So just um, statements from them showing that they would have the capacity to do that work before the 31st, some sample reports, um, some standard municipal forms like that there are no collusion and tax compliance and then um, some reference paperwork so that you would be able to call other towns or businesses that they worked for and make sure that it meets your criteria okay it so sounds like a tall order time. to me <laughs> to get done by December 31st, or am I alone in that thinking? 
I think oh. it's a little aggressive, but I'm I prefer to be a little aggressive and have them come back and say we can't do that. We can get it done by January thirty first, maybe. But I, I I do feel like it's a little aggressive, but I I would I would like to um to to push for that. You know, I think it depends on the folks who are um who are putting in for a quote. Okay. So I think it also depends when you get this out to them. Um, because you, you're, you're designing a document. So, you know, if you, it takes another month to have it go out, then that's definitely going to, um, hit your deadline as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And we wouldn't want to do that. Kevin, I know you're trying to get in here. What were you going to say? <laughs> I just, I just have a few questions. Um, Please. one of them was, I'm, I'm glad I, uh, one of them was the timeline. Um, so hearing that December 31st, um, what would then be the turnaround timeline dependent on what the uh, report said and what exactly are we looking for the report to give us back? Uh, I, I wasn't at the last meeting, so I'm sure you all probably had a chance to discuss exactly what you're looking for out of the report. But I'd be curious to see from a timeline standpoint, if at best case scenario, if we're talking about something on December 31st mm -hmm. uh, and that report is coming back to say, um, one of the things you should do is um, put a health director position in Reading. Then you're going out in the middle of what will hopefully be uh, coming up to be vaccine season. Um, um, hopefully, uh, mm -hmm. that's helpful. But um, what's the timeline of actually filling a role like that? I, I mm -hmm. thought the reason we discussed this and wanted to do this was more in the immediacy of the need to take a lot of the pressure off the Board of Health from um, being a policy board, which uh, I think we all agree is not something that the volunteers in this town should tackle. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I know it's a process, but in, I just also know town government and I know how things can grind through very slowly. Mm -hmm. To me, this feels like more of a need now than come April or May, when probably you're realistically looking at maybe to get somebody on board. So I have, I have concerns there. So I'll, well, are there, I'll, I, I can respond, but are there other comments, other questions? Are there, anybody else want to respond? Any, <laughs> Jerry? Sorry, um, I just want to ask one question. So is yeah. it different than like a, a community health needs assessment? Yes. yes. Is it something yes. that's not like, you know, an annual or triannual kind of understanding the needs of the community. This is more targeted towards the, the structure of the help. In Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, and um, yes. Okay. Thank you. So, Kevin, I, I thought that <clears throat> what we were looking to get out of this uh, report was, and I would agree with Carrie that. Um, it'd be great to have it by the end of the year, would be a look at, by an independent person, a look at the board functioning, the health department functioning, um, the resources in the department, uh, the information systems, uh, some comparative with other communities, surrounding communities mm -hmm. in terms of resources and staffing, um, and maybe a gap assessment of where we are as a board and as a health department compared to the ideal standard if that exists and that's why i brought up the idea of accreditation as being some kind of ideal standard um and the thinking is that this they would come back with um a list of recommendations um across all those things processes resources staffing information systems um, you know, programs, um, and would say, this is where, you know, your, the, the prop, the gaps are, and that would provide a justification to the town in terms of additional, uh, resources, which I think we all feel we probably need, um, but this would provide a kind of independent and hopefully fact-based assessment of, uh, needing those things. Yes. Um, it does kind of push things off. Uh, let's say we were to get it by December 31st, then 
We'd have to take a look at it. We'd have to have a conversation about it. We'd have to bring it to the select board, right? I would think, I'm, I'm not exactly sure the, the technical processes of getting new positions or additional resources, money or whatever um, in the town, whether that, that always has to go through this town warrant process or, what, or how, but I, you're right. It, it would bring us into um, kind of late winter. Oh, it would, my, my recollection would be dependent on um, you hiring a consultant and Jean can correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, as you're working towards a play, uh, paying class um, um, chart with the uh, town meeting. So mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the end all be all. It does have to go through them. They're the body that spends money here in town. Um, we do, we would have to add a position, but I think you could probably have a, um, have a bridge somewhere of a private consultant kind of bridging that gap um, till you can get that, um, that chart uh, remedied as well as gives you time, give you time to actually go out and um, go through the hiring process. Right. Right. I don't know if I have that perfect gene, is that something in that realm can, can be like yeah. that? I know it doesn't have to always be on the chart. You can have temporary hiring, correct? Yeah, so what, so what you're describing is sort of a dual track where you would correct. be doing this internal assessment, but then at the same time, we, we have a line item in the budget for outsourced professional services. There's no money in that line okay. item, but we have it. Um, <laughs> But as, so that as, would be a FinCom thing, though, wouldn't it? No, but a, as you know, um, <laughs> the town manager what really was very um, proactive in in adding thirty thousand extra in okay. salary funds for public health. So that thirty thousand is sitting in the budget. Okay. Um, uh, you, know. I just, you know, my my thought would be, you know, one of the things that's going to come back on the assessment is that. There, there probably will be a need to remove a lot of the policy uh, making from the Board of Health themselves. Um, so not policy making, I shouldn't say making, the board still has the, um, the authority over overriding them. But in regards to things like, Carrie, I don't know how many, um, how many openings you just got with, with what just came out from the governor's office this, this week. Um, you know, stuff around uh, on that nature where it really gets kind of bogged down. And I feel like needs a one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one, um, employee to really handle those things and come in. That would be one of the things that I've looked at <clears throat> for my term on the board to say, geez, that's, that really shouldn't be falling on you, the chair, yeah. to, to make sure this gets out in a timely manner. Yeah. So to me, I, I feel like that's the assessment's gonna come back and tell us things of that nature. And I just wouldn't wanna wait if that's gonna be the case and that's the avenue the board's gonna go well, we're still in the middle of this pandemic and people should realize we definitely are and, and, it's, and we're going to be in it for a while. Um, I feel like the faster you get somebody on board to start getting some of those, those uh, issues handled from a professional level, from an employee level, um, I, I think it's just going to be better for the board. I think it's going to be better for the town and the media see. And how do we do that? Because I, I know, I, again, let's play best case scenario. Here comes the assessment on the 31st. The board's meeting twice in January. I doubt you're going to go through it all in one meeting. Um, it'd be a really long meeting would be my guess. So you're potentially looking at um, not hiring somebody, even in, under what Gene just talked about, either a, a kind of a um, outside contractor um, kind of hiring with that $30,000, maybe until April, May, dependent on, you know, it, it, cause then you had, then, then you're going out to putting it out there for folks to come and apply for that. Um, we're going out there trying to contract people. So I, I just know how these things move. I don't want to see something happen in June, you know, July, August next year, if we can do, if we can do a, a stopgap, if you will, while we're kind of still working towards that full position, um, if that's what the assessment comes back at and getting through town meeting and <clears throat> paying in class chart um, to recognize it as well. So it's just, it's kind of a, to me, I'm, I'm thinking more, there should be a side-by-side -side avenue. Absolutely. hundred percent, Kevin. I am in no way, in no way suggesting that we need to wait on okay. anything, but I believe that this is a critical step because I think that the department deserves a standard to, to have in place 
for it to be functioning, for goals to be set for the long term, so that then we can step into what Jerry had asked about that we've also already talked about, which would be a community health assessment. It's irresponsible to take on a community health assessment until we're clear of what we've got in the department. What are the resources? Where are our strengths? Where are gaps? You know, and and be able to kind of be working towards a, a great understanding. So no, absolutely, Kevin. Um, okay. and if if I have said anything that. No, I just I, I no, missed no, the no. last <laughs> meeting. I just wanted to make sure and yes. clarify. I know y'all were talking about it then as well too. So yep. just yep. trying to get yep. caught quickly here. Yep. Yep, no, no, you're, you're, okay. you're, you're, we're on the same page, Rick. So, so, uh, oh, Kevin, uh, are you suggesting that as we progress with this consultant and evaluation report, um, that at the same time, we look to um, contract uh, part of an individual, some time of an, of an individual to do some specific things in the meantime, the health department. Is that what you're saying? I just that, from the conversation, and uh, to me, the way we started this conversation was that that, that was a need uh, that the board felt. Um, mm -hmm. I would agree with that. You know, I've, I've, um, I've witnessed it firsthand. I've, um, I still communicate with our two um, uh, past chairs um, to bounce ideas off them. I know the time commitment they put in. Um, I haven't obviously talked to Kerry offline for obvious open meeting law violations, um, but I, I, I'm assuming she's probably doing the same thing that they were doing. And it's, it's very, it's time consuming. It's a lot to ask a volunteer board in the middle of this pandemic to in a constantly changing environment from openings and closings to really be on top of it, to really make sure that it's getting done well. And I felt like that's where this conversation originally kind of came from. And then it uh, rightfully so I, I I agree, you know, kind of morph more into a full assessment. If we're going to do it, let's let, let's kind of figure it out all the way and let's do it all right. at once. And I, I would agree with that. So, the, yeah, my, my point would be, you know, in the immediacy, knowing that it's going to take a long time to get the assessment, to go through the assessment, mm -hmm. to, to work on on the whole thing, it you know, it's probably in the best interest of the town to get somebody on board um, sooner. Um, and if we have money available, that, which is even better, um, that's that's earmarked and specific for this. You know, I think that's that's a good opportunity. I guess that's a Allison question as well too, <laughs> how that how that works. Um, Kevin, can, just to clarify, are you talking about wait till this in, initial internal assessment is done and then get this person, or go forward and get this person on board now? I would, I think you, we would go forward and get the person on board now. The reason I say that is because I. I think, and you all can correct me on your um, interpretation of it. I feel there is a need there to to get some things off the plate of the Board of Health from a day-to-day -day operation standpoint. Um, Agree. So, so would the um, so just I'm sort of brainstorming here, but I mean, I mean if you were to carve out something that uh, this person might do, and you know, whatever. 10 hours a week or five hours a week or whatever the, the time frame is. Um, are we talking about um, carving out, let's say, um, tracking all the COVID stuff, like uh, all the new guidelines that keep coming out and um, you know, looking at those guidelines as it relates to um, what we're doing in the town and reporting back to us about, um, you know, there was a just as an example, there was a um, the the governor came out with a new set of guidelines for you know phase three, step two, opening libraries, and there was a you know someone a citizen had uh, I think sent an email to Laura saying yeah. how come our library isn't open you know yeah. so there's an issue you know a COVID related issue and um, rather than have the board kind of, that might be something you'd carve out and say, you know, look at this, look at the state guidelines, talk to the people in the library, come back and report to the board about what, you know, the guidelines would recommend. I mean, there, it seems like with COVID, there was just, you know, every week there's a new set of things. And I also noticed that, um, you know, we went from, um, on that Massachusetts map, we went from white to green. So we're still a low risk community, but I'm looking at all the other communities around us and they're going from white to green 
uh, Linfield is yellow. I feel like um, things are going to start to heat up a, a little bit. And having someone who could just focus on that, because the health department has, as it exists now, all these other responsibilities around their standard inspections and so forth. Is that, is that kind of what we might ask this person to do? Yeah, and I, I, certainly we can have a good discussion about exactly what that role would look like. We could probably, you know, uh, again, you know, these aren't reinventing the wheel kind of moments. Someone, someone has it already done for us. We just need to find it, discuss it. Um, but along those lines, certainly along the lines of as things do change, as things um, try to open, as things get downgraded so they can, mm -hmm. Um, you know, new new protocols come out for sports and, and what have you across town that that need approval. You know, it would be good to have somebody really um, running with, with with ideas of, of that, or or being a full time employee that is working on those as well and reporting back to the board on them. But again, it, I, I'm sure the wheel has been created somewhere. Um, but yeah, I you know definitely Rick along those lines. So this is really uh, what I like to call supplemental services. Okay. Yeah. Is that a counting? That maybe use somebody, a part-time person in another town in the surrounding if, communities. If I may, sure. oh, Laura. there is a, yes, hi. Um, there is a gentleman that actually used to work for the town of Reading that does this. Um, I, I met him through Reading. And oh, he worked there for, uh, Gene, how long was Bob there when I was here at the beginning? Maybe a year or so. And then, um, but that's, this is exactly what his business is, is he comes in and he picks himself department. So it is someone that the town has employed. So I don't know if we wanted to um, maybe even to him and see I, what the thoughts are. Who are you talking about, Laura? Bob Bracy. He already has a full time job. He's the health director in North Reading. Isn't North he? Reading, yeah. Right. And, yep. And this is what he does part time. He's not full time he in North Reading? He's, he doesn't yep. have a full time. He's... No, he does. Oh, he's supplementing. He's supplementing yes. income and doing yep. it part time as well. I right. See. And that's what he does is he, he, I don't know, for lack of a better phrase, fixes health department. So you might even want to, um, and I know he helped us through the gap before I came on. So perhaps you might even want to ask him. I don't, it's up to you. I'm just suggesting if you wanted to ask him how it works or if he, what his availability is or anything. I, I only know that he was in Reading when I started. I'm not sure what his availability is or if he even still has that company. Interesting. I didn't know that that was a side side hustle for him. Interesting. There's um, also, oh, if I might interject, uh, sure, there, I, I also know an individual from an abutting community that might be helpful. Uh, so I know that there is a, a woman who runs the Wakefield Health Department by the name of Ruth Clay. Uh, since we're talking about acc uh, accreditation and since we're talking about uh, standardization, I know that she's worked on several state level programs to get health departments kind of working on like a standardized footing. So it seems like she might have some experience directly related to that need. So it, I don't know what her availability is either, but uh, she seems she seems like she fits the, the description of what we might need. If she has any part-time availability, that might be helpful. She used to be the health director in Reading. Yeah, she managed. She, and she managed twice a regional collaboration with Melrose. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. Well and she's um yeah quite well known. She's a um she she's um yeah she's she's a she is a wealth of knowledge about public health. Um and yes you're right she was a member of the special commission. Um, may I? This is Alice. May I interject for one moment? Sure. So the. City of Plymouth or town of Plymouth, I don't know if it's a city or a town, did this right. process not that long ago? Yes. Right. And I had shared that with the board. I actually have that open. I was going to try and reshare it with folks just so they have it and give it to Jerry because she wasn't with us at that time. Um, so, so there, yes. Sorry, what I'll they received in their end result, is yes. that what you're looking 
you have you you've seen their end result and that's yes. the type of report you want? Yep. That was what I was, yes, that was what I was suggesting. And when we talked about it uh, last month, the um, uh, Rick and, and Paula were present and they, they concurred. Kevin, I, Kevin wasn't, Kevin wasn't with us and Jerry hadn't joined yet. So, um, so let me um, resend that document. Thank you, Allison. Um, and, and I just want to, um, in terms of the names of Bob Racy and Ruth Clay, I think, you know, th that's an interesting thing. I think it's a little different than what we're talking about in terms of, I mean, what, what, but, what we, sorry, let me just finish. What we just described was someone who could come in and take on the COVID overview. So, so it, I'm, I'm, it sounds like what Dan, you and, and Laura were describing were people who, 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 um, who, um, do standardization for departments. So those those sound like different roles. Did I did I miss you? Bob actually does both. He will um, come in and fix a department and bring it back to a whole. And he's he's been doing this for a lifetime. Gene, how long has he been doing this? I, I don't want to age him. Maybe so. I don't want to say too long. But um, you know, he's not a, an elderly man by no means. But um, he's been doing this his entire career. But he also um, assists during COVID, and he he does he pretty much does everything. I would um, I would give him a call and you know see maybe it might be something that you know he doesn't do, and he'll tell you straight out if he can't do it. And again, I just know him. He was he was a great mentor when I came into Reading, and he might be able to help you to bridge the gap. And Ruth Clay is wonderful and a wealth of knowledge as well. But I know that um, Bob did work for Reading. So I, I would just caution, um, on a, and it's good to have the conversation, but um, the town manager is the hiring authority. So um, I appreciate the feedback and the ideas, but I think we have to be very mindful of that um, and um, work collaboratively in that arena. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's a, um, yeah. Um, so, okay. So for the assessment, I, I want to, so it sounds like for the assessment, we need, there, there needs to be a review of the document. I'd like that to be expedited um, because I really think we need to move quickly. And also I think then the board is, 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 very interested in moving forward on asking for hiring of someone to fill a role for the health department. Am I hearing that correctly? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. So the question on the assessment I have, Carrie, if you don't mind, yep. um, <clears throat> how do we go about this? This is not, we don't have to go through procurement um, nope. to, so this is oh, about. Yes. But who's going to do the work to get to, to figure out the firms that do this kind of thing and who then hires that. Okay. You, okay. <laughs> I, have, I have a list for you. Erin um, goes then to, to Bob with a list. I'm assuming Gene of here's, you know, two or three folks and Bob hires them or is it just, we decide who we want. I'm curious to the problem. No, my comment before about hiring was if we were going to bring in supplemental services and hire someone, that was my okay. comment. Bob's, Bob's got that. We get the assessment. The assessment, the assessment yes. we get to decide. Yes. That's so, our, okay. our scope, just our, our yeah. thing. Just want to get the full wrap yep. on it. Okay. Yeah. No, that's good. We've got multiple multiple trains, so let's mm. be clear on where they're going. Um, the one question I had, okay. if, if, um, if there wants to be a selection committee, and um, Allison and I were uh, reviewing the language, usually with a consultant services um, offering like this, there's typically a, and it doesn't have to be a big group, but there's a, there's a selection committee that's gonna review the submittals and make a decision that it isn't just one person is, is how I've seen this go. Is that what the board was thinking? I, I know what sense. I was thinking. I, I was thinking it would be a committee of the whole, but that may not be what others interest is. That may not be expedient either, Carrie, because there may not be an open meeting. That's true. That to happen. It, you know, we're probably better off designating one board member and um, staff member or two staff members. 
that okay. point to just to kind of get that ball rolling faster. Okay. Helps hit that deadline a little bit easier. Anything to move it faster. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's kind of how I've seen it done. Um, and and I haven't done a lot with boards, so I'm, I'm trying to give the lay of the land a little bit. But yeah, if it's um, one person from the board, you know, maybe it's one person from procurement, and maybe it's, I don't know, I'll, I'll pick on the town manager since he's not here. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like something like that, that's yeah. not gonna be this elaborate thing, it's tight, um, yeah. but we kind of get all the bases covered. And, um, you know, yeah. I, I've been through this many, many times with um, consultant review and the process, you know, you review, you, mm -hmm. you have your criteria, you see, see your submittals. It's very clear cut when you, bring people together and, and do the review. Yeah, I assume you go back to the folks that um, apply to what you have specifically. So that's why I was thinking it can be more expedient rather than being in, coming back to meetings to figure that out. And then, you know, we meet every two weeks. So then, right. okay, we've got the finalists. You can bring the finalists to the board and say, this is what we went through. This is the criteria we used. This is what we didn't use and the reasons why. And, you know, then the board has the chance to, to kind of hear it all. But I think if you get all the behind the scenes homework done before that and then bring it to the board. I think it'll be faster than continuing to run it through the board. Yep. Thank you, Kevin, for pointing that out. That's that's very right. Does that make sense to everybody else? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you could even make it faster if you just des designated one board member to be on the selection committee and the selection committee makes the selection and we go to work. Right. I don't know if that's too fast. <laughs> Who's dying um, to that's do a this? Because <laughs> I'm thinking Carrie's gonna already already got her uh, her hand uh, up. Absolutely, Rick. Do you, uh, do you have a burner or? Yes, I'd I'd be happy to be on that committee with okay. Dean or Bob and Allison, um, and you know review the uh, review them and and make a recommendation to the board. Yeah. You know, ideally, it'd be uh, well. Let me step back one one bit. We had talked earlier about um, maybe the board having an opportunity to review one the final draft that's going out to these uh, consultants. Absolutely. So, if, so today's Thursday. So, if if we could see that, um, and would how would um, if we all took a look at that? and made some suggestions. Carrie, do you want to do that or do you want me to do that? You know, to take all the suggestions and finalize the um, the document that's going out to the four or five people, how would we do that? You can't. I can't. No, we can't. Not, not outside of an open meeting. Oh, okay. So we could look at it individually. Individually. Yeah, yeah what, what one idea would be that um, Allison and I, we're, we're almost ready to roll, um, get something out to the board, I don't know, early next week, the board meets Thursday night, you know, again, review. If you want to tack this on to next Thursday, yep. share, yeah. share, collaborate in the open forum. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, plan. Finalize it next yes. Thursday. Yes. Okay. Um, then yes. we're done. Because yes, and, and thank you, Rick, because I would, you know, from an abundance of, of, um, of, of caution, I, I know some of the people, I, I, I sit on committees with some of the people on the list. Um, no, I have good. Done work, so I'd have a conflict yeah. of interest. I want to be arm's length from the selection process as much as I would love to be, be part of it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm here, but it would not be appropriate for me to be the, the be uh, be arranging to do business with with these folks. So um, okay. thank you for. Can, can I ask a question? Yeah. So you, you already have people in mind, or did I did I lose something on that? There's a list that I had shared with the board in August of. Um, oh, for the for the ten ten hour position. No, for okay. the assessment. Oh, okay, for the other part. Okay. Talking about okay, sorry. Yep. Yeah. There's okay. a list of list of um, yep. different folks who, okay. who do this work. There are um, former directors yep. of health departments who have done assessments. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So um, we have a plan. We're going to see a draft from Allison and Jean early next week. We're all going to have have a have a, a review of it. 
Um, we will take it up at our meeting on the 8th, which is for minutes, but we will be able to talk about this. Um, we will, um, hopefully we can have a screen share of it. If there needs to be any markup of it, we can take care of it right then in the meeting, get it approved, and then it can be sent out. Um, and what kind of turnaround time, Allison, would you recommend for requests? Would we say three weeks, end of the month? Yeah, we, we do a lot of things two or three weeks. I think it's yeah. going to depend on how much you've changed the overall document. Yeah. If you have the report from Plymouth, yep. of what they actually received back, if you can send that to me and who the contractors are, yep. because then I can incorporate some of what's in that work into the document, which you can take okay. out or take. But I made a bunch of notes from here to okay. add to the document based on all your discussion but okay. um it was also friend, and i'm available next thursday if you want me to tune in while you make the edits and i can change them in word while we're all online thank that you. is nice thank you for thank that you very much no problem there was also the uh, uh nantucket did a similar thing as yes. Nantucket okay. did an internal assessment. Um, yeah, so that I'm, I'll forward you the same message everybody else has, Allison, and I'll, I'll ex explain or that everybody else is going to get. Um, so that Perfect. It would just make sometimes it makes it easier. Like I can say, oh, I we should add this to the scope because and then you can always pull it out. Yep. Yep. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Great. Anybody have any other questions about the assessment before I think we we settled this? Yeah. Okay. Is, there Very actionable, email? is this an actionable item? Do we have to do anything? No. Okay. You don't have to take a vote or anything if that's okay. your question. Nope. Okay. okay. Um, but Carrie, you have my email address. Is it just A Jenkins? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Got it. All right. Thank okay. you all very much. I will Thanks see you next you, Thursday, Allison. but I'll send it out on um I will be done by Monday. That's not a problem. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thanks, Allison. Thank you for joining Thank us. You. Thanks for the time. Sure. Bye-bye. And the only tricky thing about next week is it's um, we're getting into a holiday weekend right. on the uh, right. 12th. Right. But that's just for Monday. So right. Monday the 12th is a holiday, but right. that's just for us, not for, yep. not for anything else. Okay. Um... Jerry, I'm sorry, I don't have your email. Um, it's Jerry oh. at Gmail. Sorry. Jerry what? G E R I C R A M E R. Nope. At Gmail. I can send you the list. I, I have a list of everybody's contact information if that would be helpful. Thank you. As long as everybody's okay with me sharing it. Absolutely. Okay. I think it's all public when you guys applied it all your stuff yes. there. <laughs> yep. Jackie put it one together for me so I have a very neat nice neat list. Great. I would be happy to send that. Thank you. Okay. Um all right then. So well that was good. That was good. Um I I I, I just as we've discussed this up this interim position I don't know if there's anything we need to communicate to I, I feel. Um, or, 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 go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was thinking that with respect to that, we um, that may be something we need to have on the agenda for the fifteenth. Okay. Um, you know, a, a discussion of what exactly, if if we hired a supplemental person for a few hours a week, what exactly would we be asking to do? And then when we're clear on that, then I guess it's then we have to find out if we can get it funded quickly. Um, well, Bob is, I believe, planning on attending on the 15th. Yes. So that will work that's out right. very nicely. Oh, that's good. Yes, that's um, right. We have a couple of things on the 15th. Um, the town clerk also would like to plan on attending to uh, review the revised floor plan for the field house. Um, she's got some changes that are designed to improve the flow. And um, yeah. if the Board of Health wants to review that, she can attend on the 15th. Mm -hmm. And, and, and um, if I remember right, the town manager wanted to come and, and talk about the building openings. That was one of the, he wanted to raise that. Yes. Okay. 
yes. the the two parts of this supplemental services hire are what what's what tasks what would this hire be tasked with mm -hmm. and then the mechanics with the town manager's help of okay. okay thank you thanks okay all right then we're 10 15 making my notes for the agenda okay um okay so next then and thank you for your patience laura thank you for accommodating so since we had allison join us we wanted to um have her have the opportunity to talk about that so now we get laura and the health agent monthly report okay um so for the month of september um i as you know attended the board of health meetings and chatted with some of the Board of Health members on various items um, on separate conversations. I reported the weekly COVID case numbers to Incident Command and Board of Health every Wednesday, reported daily addresses to first responders to ensure safety, attended two DPH calls every week, attended a week weekly emergency preparedness call, reviewed Recreation Department um department permits yesterday actually with paula squeak that one in the last minute see that paula yeah <laughs> met with my inspectors and nurses and met as needed enrolled payroll entered payroll sorry maintained vacation six time and insured coverage and took a week off during all this you did not review. <laughs> I did. You just didn't know that because I answered you all. It was a week off from my email, which I learned was not a very good idea because apparently I didn't needed to be checking it. Um, reviewed guidelines that were released by DPH, conducted and or addressed or reviewed or assisted had my hands in the pot a little bit there with the um, other inspectors, the complaints, um, approved mileage, reimbursement, ran two complete Maven audits with the nurse, responded to a few Han alerts, just about, um, they weren't anything egregious this uh, month, mostly mosquitoes and none in writing, so that worked out very well, but you still have to respond to them. Mm -hmm. um, received the flu shots, ordered flu shots, ran um, the flu clinic. So we ran two at the fire department, no, one at the fire department. We were unable to run our second one. We're going to have to reschedule that one. And ran two at the police station and one at the Coolidge School. And we have given 370 shots as of right now. We met our state um, deliverables. Well, we started our state deliverables. We have quite a ways to go, so we'll wrap those up. Um, actually, my state deliverables will be done by early December, so that'll be, if not late November, so that'll be perfect timing. Um, distributed information to the Board of Health, updated and formatted some minutes, and then, um, as you know, Jean was instrumental in the minutes and has merged everything. And Jackie's also um, been very helpful in the minutes. Maintain the database for tracking the Board of Health minutes. And as far as on the nurses level, as you know, I think it goes without saying that she, they are all very busy doing um, COVID calls and contact tracing. But in addition to all that, they, um, Christine also had three TB cases and one Hep C. Mm. Um, thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions, Laura. Um, on the um, COVID case counts, was what did Christine share any information? If people are you know wondering as case counts go up, people are wondering if there are these individual cases, are these family transmission cases? And we've talked about you know if if we can share info. Um, if there's anything that's not that wouldn't uh, compromise confidentiality, that that would be helpful to know. Did she share anything for, with you for this year, this week? Uh, what um, what do you want to know, actually? So there um, are 
currently, so our number seven. reflects 17. Yep. And the question was, I, you know, is that, are, is that new? Is that, um, so let me just open my thing. Hold on one second. So we have 17 active cases right now. There is one home that the husband and wife have it. There is one home that the husband, wife, and teenager oh, have sorry, it. Mr. Laura, I'm um, Lori. I just want you to stop for that. I don't want you to. That, that's that's kind of. I don't. That's a lot of detail. Oh, I thought you just said are they on well, the same household? Well, but right, and so it would be yes. They're they're households. Household three, transition. three a household, which is what I was just going to give you the last one, and then the rest are all individuals at different locations. Okay, okay. So no clusters, which is what we're looking for. Right. Exactly. Okay. Um, and thank you for um, reminding us that there are other things besides COVID um, with the the three TB and the, the Hep C. I hope that those folks are 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 doing okay. Um, Laura, can you? Um, elaborate on what the state deliverables are? So in order to get funding from the state and get um, backup from the state and to get a group working with the state in case there's ever an emergency or anything, we belong to emergency preparedness. And in order to get money, get funding, get help, you have to meet certain deliverables. So everything you do is different. Sometimes it might just be a call, a call down, a setup. So I chose um, both this year and last year to meet with the state in regards to my flu vaccine. So we do different stages of the vaccine and the administration of that to meet these deliverables. And all deliverables are different. I can't give you exactly on what they are. Some things are just as simple as make sure the fire department knows because they're, they're incident command. And sometimes it's more like, you know, they were there watching the distribution of the flu shots at the Coolidge school. Mm -hmm. um, and how much funding do we get from the state for our EP activities? So Sorry. we have, right. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm putting you on the spot. I didn't tell you I was going to ask that, but just that's okay. Um, so, what do we still have, Jean, or did we give it back? That seven thousand five hundred. Are you talking about the the grants from the MAPC? Yep. That, that's COVID money. Yeah. This is straight and, from and DPA. Asking certification ties back to funding. Right, and they're, they're all like looped in together. So we have, I know we have the $7,500. I don't know if we sent it back because it had to be used by August 30th or- No, they extended the deadline. They extended the deadline, Laura. We have we have 15,000, but that's MAPC COVID-19 money. Oh yeah, because he asked me today if we were spending that. Yeah, we've been talking about um, using that for, we had, plan to use that for well we've been talking about that for, for a long time about what we might use it for but anyway it i'll let carrie jump in sorry i just i, I just was curious about how how much because i know that that the ep money varies and and i was curious what the allocation is for the town for the for the work that you're you're doing yeah it like you said though it varies on depending which what what they have, what they're doing. I know that the first round we did not take advantage of, and I don't know how much this round is going to be. I think you're talking about something different. I'm talking about the DPH money. Yeah. The money that, that 3 three E or F or B or whatever it is administered just. Right. We, won't, we, we don't know yet exactly how much that'll be. Oh, there's not a there's not a contract yet. Oh, it varies. Okay. Um. Okay. Thanks. Um. Does anybody else have any other questions? Three hundred shots. I just want to say that three hundred shots at Coolidge. That was that was a lot. Three hundred three hundred people got vaccinated. That's great. Yeah, that's a big success. Great job. 
And I thank you. And I can say I'd like to thank everybody, though. Daniel, you you were there. Daniel was instrumental. The nurses, every Paul Jackson, Greg Burns, everybody worked as a nice, cohesive team and worked very well together. I'm I'm very big on the team approach, in case you can't tell. And yeah. we're we're very very fortunate that we all work very well together. And everybody chipped in and did a, was very active in different portions of what needed to be done, including Greg Burns, who is, was even handing out clipboards and, and pay, forms. Nice. So I have to give a shout out to everybody because everybody worked very well together. Nice. That's great. And um, I would like to say that we were, I was on my, my um, coalition call today. And when I told them that we had done 300, 300 um, shots at the Coolidge school, Everyone um, chimed in for, um, oh, how'd you do that? What'd you do? Like, because everyone's getting to, don't do that. Everyone's doing theirs now. And they're, everybody's starting with their um, flu clinics. So we're a little bit ahead of the curve because we already get, did us. And I'm hoping to get enough flu shots to maybe run another one. But I'm not sure what we're going to get in, in our next shipment. Right. Right. Laura, um, we were we were talking about. I, I was curious how many um, how many uh, vac vaccinators did you have? How many nurses? We had Christine all day, Elise all day, and then Mary came for. Um, Mary came. She I think she had something. She came a little bit later, and Sharon was there as well. And they were all Mary doing shots. That's great. Yep. Mary Juliana. Yep. yep. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, and and it was yeah, from and, and you know we all chipped in like I even fill vials, so it's it, we we all work very very well together. And it, and that was three. So you did, it was a three hour clinic, and you did three hundred. That's great. Well, it started off at three hours. I think the last person strolled in at seven thirty, a little oh, late. Oh, that's oh and she. But but that wasn't because the line was that long. She had the time wrong and she walked in and we were still cleaning up. So, you know, Christine was gracious enough to right. administer the vaccine because we didn't right. want to send her away. Right. Wow. Well, a big thank you to yeah, great job. everyone. Yeah. Great work. And that I just want to chip in and say, uh, Laura has praised everyone, but I, I, I think I would be remiss not to say that I, she did an excellent job as well. I mean, for goodness sake, the entire three hours, she never took a single break. The entire operation was very well coordinated. Uh, so I just wanted to give that one shout out at least. Thanks. Good nice. job and thank Jan. you. That's nice, Jan. Yep. Thanks. Um, I, I had just uh, oh. one question. Last time we, we talked about having a, um, a flu clinic at the senior center. Um, is that in the planning state? We are, do we have a date? Yes, we are have, um, shoot, is it the 21st or the 22nd? Do you remember? I gotta look. Um, I might have it on my command notes. Oh, it went out in the pleasantries. Yes, October 14th from one to three. Thank oh, you, Paula, no, I was way off. No, that's the wrong one. I'm not seeing it here. I thought it was going to be a Tuesday or a Thursday of that week. Was that so the 15th or the 17th? Does that sound right? Anybody ring a bell? No. Okay. I'm having so, a blank. I'm sorry. I got to find it. Okay. But but yes, we are having one. It is by appointment only though, Rick. By appointment only. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. And you know, I, um, I noticed that the announcement for the flu clinic on Tuesday came out on Monday. And um, so it's amazing you got 300 people with 24 hour notice. Um, well, we did we did already have it on the website and we were fielding calls as they were coming in. So it wasn't like that was. Oh, okay. The, oh, yeah, no, there, there had been quite, there had been some notice. You gotta pass them. Okay, go on, I'll be right up. Um, Plus, and the, the, email um, that went the senior out as well. Yeah. Yep. Reverse 911, yeah. Reverse and then um, the senior center is on October 22nd from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. By appointment. Yes. Okay. 
Great. Laura, is that going to be put on the website too? Um, Elise was on that. I believe she already did. She sent out the flyer and everything. I didn't see it on the on the homepage. Um, I didn't. I didn't. She was. I, I, I let her take the reins on that one, but I can um, put it on. I can send it off right now. Uh, Jane Wellman is also, she's the one that we've been working with on doing the code red. So if that's uh, another option too, I think to uh, Rick's point, maybe get that out, you know, like next week. Yep. We do have a coordination meeting on Tuesday uh, just to kind of go over some of the logistics. So we can talk a little bit more with the nurses and girls going on some of these details. Yeah, I let Elise really run with this one because she knows them and she um, she was fielding the calls for the um, for the um, appointments. All right. Told you we're a team. So any other questions before we move on to COVID, COVID, COVID? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, thank you, Laura. Um, so COVID, um, Paula, you attended command this week. Thank you. I um, did. Yeah. Um, so some of the things that were talked about was, of course, the flu clinic that just happened. Yep. There was some discussion about the school nurse that had been, been uh, being used for contact tracing. Um, and the, uh, the schools were wondering if that was a good, uh, something that they could be, should not be continued because they're down, the school system is down a nurse at this point. Right. Um, and looking to hire, uh, there's somebody out on medical leave. So, um, there, there may be some problems going forward in terms of contract tracing, but if it, um, I could just jump in, Paula, just to clarify that I think with, with the discussion, I was at the meeting also, the discussion was about um, the schools having a little bit of a capacity issue and they weren't sure what we were using for school nursing, but we're only using the school nurse on Saturdays. On Saturdays. So it ended up really not to be an issue. But I think right. there was you know, trying to have a conversation to make sure we're all the left hand knows what the right hand's doing. Right, right, right. Yeah, because yeah, I thought they were. That. Yeah, but they they were right. Yeah, because they were concerned. I remember early conversations. They were concerned about being back in school and having jobs that they needed to do. So right. Okay. Um. Sorry. Yep. That's okay. Uh. Uh, Dr. Doherty talked about the phasing plan of the uh, kids going back to school, um, which begins October 13th for the first, second, sixth, seventh, and eighth grades. Um, they, they will be hybrid in the sixth, seventh, and eighth with cohorts. And by October 30th, everybody should be back in school. He said that the problem is it has been filling vacancies for teachers. Um, and uh, for Birch Meadow, it start it starts October nineteenth because they're getting modules that uh, are just have just been delivered. Uh, they talked also about Halloween, which we need to have a little chat about. Uh, one of the Killam is planning a school car parade just around the school, not in not in the neighborhood or anything like that. The kids get dressed up, they're in the car with the parents, and they're just doing a parade around the school. Hmm. So um, that didn't seem to be an issue, but uh, they did in command ask us to discuss uh, our thoughts on Halloween. So we can yep. do that later. Um, there's also, there was some question about a vigil being held for Brianna Taylor at the high school. This was teacher initiated. Um, it, they wanted to do it that night, but they postponed it and we're waiting to get details in terms of gathering and numbers and distance and all of that. Um, going forward, 
there was talk about uh, the CARES Act money, but I was not real clear about that. They, they were talking about expenditures, but it, it didn't look like it involved, it involved the board at all. It was mostly for um, police, fire, et cetera. And they were talking about meeting food needs for people in the, the town. Um, and there was some difficulty in that, although the, the town is able, through the school system, has been providing meals to pay, families, um, and there have been an increase in needs, uh, and that includes the MECO uh, students as well. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, that there is apparently a, a a person from Boston who's been coming out in a van and picking up the meals to bring back to families in Boston. Um, this is supposed to run out in 12, uh, on, in Dece on December 31st. And so there was some discussion as to what how we can manage this. Um, uh, the town cannot provide transportation of the foods to uh, Boston. Um, so they talked about organizations like St. Vincent de Paul Society, who don't have to go through the bureaucratic uh, rigmarole that everybody else has to in order to get the needs met for these people. Um, then they talked about uh, a senior center event that's going to be on October 14th from one to three. And it's a kind of drive-by event that they're just, it's just to let the seniors in the town know that they're there uh, if, if any of the seniors are in need of anything. And they're going to have a drive-by event where they have a gift bag, including a Harrow's pie uh, for any seniors um, who come by during that period. And uh, they also said that they'd be able to supply those gift bags to uh, the, the homebound. And Rotary is going to have a classic car event. It's just driving through the town, no stopping, nothing, no gathering. And then the, they just talked about step three, phase two, which hadn't been reported yet. Great. Thank you, Paula. Thank you for covering that for me. My pleasure. Um, and I'm trying to spend. Um, oh, it's hard to type in. I was, I am sending a link to the um, state guidance on um, Halloween. On Halloween. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, but I, I did see it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'll figure out, send it to everybody. I mean, it's, it's. Is that the one I sent out last week? Yeah, I think it, it's, I, I did get an email with it in there. I did hear um, a, an interesting take on it today on the on the radio. Oh yeah, um, uh, yeah, candy shoots. <laughs> Apparently, it started out in the Midwest that you have a long shoe, you don't, you have gloves on to deliver the candy down the chute, and they put lands in the bag. <laughs> Hadn't yeah. seen one, but I thought it was an interesting concept. But I know I've seen a lot of activity on, on um, Facebook from parents looking for some guidance around this. Yeah. And, you know, I'll say, and I'd be interested to hear from our clinicians, but yeah, I mean, the, 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 the research is showing that I, I want people to be careful and I want people to be cautious, but I also don't want people, I want people to kind of put their energy into places that, that is really meaningful. And, and and not have people feel like they have to go out and buy a shoot or build an elaborate thing because I mean we're still seeing it's like the transmission from um, contact is um, like three percent you know that 97 percent of transmission is 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 covered by masking so um, the message remains the same it's mask up it's um, maintain your social distance it's be cautious about spending you know, long periods of time over 10 to 15 minutes with people in close proximity. And it's about being outside if you can, um, you know, outside is better. 
Yes, exactly. I mean, that's one of the nice things. So if anybody has any other on that. Um, the the, um, the guidance that I think Laura had sent around the link yeah. and, um, and I think it was the state and there was a link there to the CDC. Yes. I mean, they, they discouraged, you know, traditional trick-or-treating. Um, I think because um, al although the children would wear masks, hopefully the adults coming to the door would wear masks, um, you know, there's, there's not gonna be six feet between them. And so, you know, particularly if, um, if either side is not wearing masks and there are repeated multiple visits exactly. to multiple houses, yep. there's, there's that risk. So they were kind of uh, arguing against that. Yeah. Oh, can't hear you, Paula. I know, that's weird. Now? Yes. That's oh, okay. It, it also, I think it also talked about make, uh, encouraging people, if they are going to trick or treat, to do it as family groups, as, as opposed to hordes of kids from the neighborhood going together. Right. Right. So, um, sorry, I have to do something. Um, so I reviewed the, I, the guidance came out on, on Friday. Um, so I, I read it, but I didn't, I didn't retain a lot of it. I'll be very honest. Um, <laughs> um, and, and I need to, um, need, need to, to review, um, when you say Paula, the command was asking for us to have a conversation about it, were they um, asking for uh, specific guidance? Were they asking us to come back to command to talk about what we what we want to recommend? Um, they, they were asking if basically we would agree with the uh, guidance from the state and the CDC. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> Where's Kevin? Kevin with his you know, public health fun killers. Here we are I'm, again. <laughs> I'm back. I'm sorry. No, no, you're on fine. my internet and booted me out of here. Oh no. Tri trick or treating is not when we're a team. That's what I'm sending Daniel. <laughs> what did I miss? Seems like I missed some fun here. We were just ta we were talking about Halloween and talking about um what what does the board want to to say about state guidance and about um recommendations for the town for um halloween trick-or-treat activities um and and paula just said who's going to be mean and say no trick-or-treating i was like this is a perfect cue for kevin and the public health fun killers comment right <laughs> Here we are again. <laughs> Maybe that's why the internet goblins uh, shut <laughs> you out, Kevin. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he said no. Um, Let's ask his son what he thinks. Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a quick answer. Yeah, that's a very quick answer. Um, okay, so the state guidance says um, family groups, if you must, but maybe you ought not um and um and rick thank you for that point about um about you know it's the issue of repeated door contact um is is a concern especially if we have somebody who's asymptomatic for example and is traveling about that would certainly be a a, a concern um so do we want to suggest yeah. I mean, it's kind of hard to go against the CDC and state I, <laughs> I mean, I to come up for us to come up with something that nope. is is diametrically opposed. We can't nope. really do that. I mean, nope. the only, I mean, I don't, you know, those guidelines, as you, you mentioned, Carrie, are pretty lengthy and laborious. And I mean, it, it might be a public service to synthesize those or um, into a power, you know, a couple paragraphs that are a little bit yep. the average person looking on the website or or maybe we pub you know maybe yep. we publish um 
a, a sort of short, shorter summary that's consistent, but doesn't go into the excruciating detail that those guidelines do. Yep. And I'm, I'm thinking, and I don't know, is this something we might be able to access Jane Wellman um, and, and get a little assistance creating a nice graphic image that can be distributed widely so the schools have access and, you know, maybe sharing it with some retailers and the like. Um, I'm looking at you, Jean, because, yep. yeah, <laughs> is, is that something that J Jane could, could be asked to assist us with? Yeah, yeah she, she, she's, she's great. She'll, she'll, she's, you know, whatever we need is, we get, okay. Jane, we get a lot of other resources too. Right, right. I mean, that's, a, I, I know Jane just because I know she worked on the, the vote piece and, and, um, and others, but I don't, I don't know how comms communications work, you know, happens in the, in the town. So we, we yeah, overload Jane. We, um, we can the admins draft something and send it um, to Jane for review or Jane could just create it either way. That would be, that would be great. And I think you're right, Rick, I think to, to, to synthesize, to distill um, what's the message, um, you know, kind of the four lines. Um, I think that that would be an important yeah. public service. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting the guidelines had things like, uh, have you ever heard of trunk and treat? Trunk yes. and treat? And so the first I heard of that too, Rick. This is apparently a custom where cars line up in a parking lot and then the kids go from trunk to trunk and they, I, you know, it's, but that's an example of how voluminous the guidelines are to cover you know, all across, that's apparently a custom somewhere. Yeah. Um, so, so Jane can do something like that and you could review it? Or they do it quite a bit in Middleton, Rich. They do? Mm -hmm. oh, interesting. Yeah. Very cute. <laughs> yeah. Well, not a, not a great practice this year. Oh, Paula, we can't hear you again. No. You're not I, muted, but no. Connection. There you are. Okay, it's my connection. Okay. Okay. Um, so just so I understand, that somebody a person drives up to a location in their car, opens their trunk that is full of candy no. and kids walk by. No. No? <laughs> oh yes, yeah, sorry. People yeah, people like dress up and, and park in a parking lot and there's a parking lot full, so it's like an old car rally, except that it's okay people in costumes with candy in their trunks and the kids walk from car to car and get goodies and. Okay, just clarifying, thank you. Yep, yep. So, so does somebody need to summarize that CDC? Are we looking for someone to do that or is Jane gonna do that herself? Jean, I'm Jean, happy to do it. Is my point? Know, it's, it's, what is what is what does Jane need? What she's probably going to do is do a Google search and see what the other cities and towns are doing. I'm sure that okay. yeah, from the why reinvent the wheel? Yep. Department. And there may be. I haven't looked. I don't know if you've looked, or there may be something out on MHOA already. Um, exactly. MHOA. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yep. Okay. Good. Um, okay. I believe North Reading already put something out if we want to check them as well. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, lost my agenda. Um, okay. So, so I guess that, um, so the next under COVID was coordination with schools. Paula, you talked a little bit about that with um, already in command. You know, is there any questions or further comments? Um, no. Um, civic function, so, so these are separate, but they kind of get grouped. So civic function permits and rec permits. Um, Paula, thank you for having taken that on. You did most of it. I couldn't believe what you did. It well, I just told you. 
I just sent you what I had been, what I what was all completed so that you guys all knew what was closed out and, and we were starting with a fresh slate. Um, so, um, so, <laughs> So thank you, um, and, and we're not done with them yet. And it turns no, out that there's, no. there's permits for the town forest too. That, yeah. uh, who knew? That's um, a work in progress. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, though, though, I think DBW was trying to be helpful and they offered to, to do the review themselves and we certainly appreciate that. But as I said to the town manager, I'm, I'm not really comfortable um, given the what we've seen. I, you know, I spoke for myself and, and spoke as we talked about um do we not review things that that folks are putting together and and our board was in agreement that we needed to review in advance because there have been misinterpretations and and it was important so um so certainly kind of the dpw to try and help out with that but um we need to to bring that in to the fold. So I don't know, do they have a, is that a different kind of permit? Is that just town forest permit? Yeah, there's, there's actually, I think, I don't know if I sent it to you. I think I did the, the, the scouts are doing things and they're having yes. meetings there. And um, did that end up with you, Paula? Yes. Yeah, okay. So um, yeah, DPW was trying to just navigate what, what should they be doing now that these things are closed. Yep. Laura, they just sent that out yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that just started yesterday, though. Those weren't lingering the whole time I was on vacation, were they? Um, so there, I don't know. I don't know what the what the issue was, but what I understood was, and I don't know if it had to do with the town forest or something else, but there was some workflow issue that came up that um, they hadn't heard back. And so that's when I was when I was on vacation or did it come out on the 30th because I, I, I couldn't tell I yeah. tried to go through it and the oldest one I could get was the 30th and I did it last night. Yeah, it, it was um, there was somehow we had a workflow issue. So um, yeah, because I did. So I apologize, Paula, I didn't tie you in until I got tied in, which was yesterday. So that's why it was so late at night. Yeah, because one was happening today. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a little workflow, and actually, I I, I offered um, in my office. Uh, we have a lot of workflow. We have run three tra three online training centers with you know tickets for different changes and errors and so forth. So we actually use something called Smartsheet, um, which I started using three years ago for because it, it was free, um, and um, use that just to track everything. And and I've offered to demo the work that I use, what I do in my office with it, um, because it does seem like that might be a helpful tool. Um, but I don't know what other tools there are or or, or, or what. Um, but yeah, I think there's definitely cross, cross departmental um, collaboration is always tricky and email is just not a good project management tool. <laughs> it's just not. <laughs> um, <laughs> all you know gotten caught by that so okay so that's moving paula you're doing that thank you and yeah. and um and like i said i did i if if anybody's interested wants to take me up on that demo jean and laura and whoever that's i'm happy to do that just we can schedule a time so yeah i i forwarded your email to it and i said i looped them and i said maybe we should be working you know because it is there's some things we can do and some things we can't and you know yep. they were the gatekeeper so i said you know maybe we can all give some, give this some thought yeah great yeah i mean smart Chief's not the only one out there there's there's asana some people love asana there's and there's others um smart Chief's just what i have i i'm familiar with and like i said it's it's a happy to happy i i think it's I think it's a great plan and anything that keeps us on track is wonderful, but it literally came in yesterday and was done by last night. So I think we covered it fast. Understood. Understood. There, there, like it, it's sort of a, the bigger picture issue of trying to keep track and, and know who's, who's got what and so forth. The workflow management piece. Um, I think it just having done this for a, a, a gosh, six weeks um i think it i think it would um i think that it's a tool that's worthwhile for folks to think about that's all so, 
Um, okay. COVID, um, right, so step, phase three, step two, some increases, we don't have outdoor performance venues or indoor performance venues, so we're not subject to that. Um, I know there was discussion earlier about the library. Uh, we had voted uh, a ways back for, for the library to be open. They, they were gonna come to us and discuss what they wanted to about functioning, but um, under step two, they would be able to be at 50% capacity. Uh, Laura, have you gotten any questions from anybody about step two? Nope. Okay. And what about the, um, <laughs> what about the, the, what about the bars? <laughs> The, the parties of, and, and, you know, able to host parties of 10 and, and able to have parties at the bar. Is that, have you been able to meet with everybody about that? Meet with them? Well, I don't know. Do you check in with the, the, the facilities, the, the restaurants that we in, inspect? Just, just as we're doing inspections, we're not, we're still going by the same process that we've been going by the whole time, whereas we go out on complaints and routine inspections. Okay. So there haven't been any questions to you about the increase in party size or anything like that, sounds like. There has not. Okay. Um, I'm lost because I, I, I got lost there because I was like, oh, did I miss the funny? I didn't. Yeah, no, just, just, check in because we because the guidance changes the guidance keeps changing um, and Carrie we actually do have two performance venues in town oh god the the quantum power plays club and the old hose house on main yeah. street thank and you the quantum power players emailed that they want to do something okay uh, that j literally just came in right before the meeting okay okay uh, that's they right yeah, they want to do another similar kind of thing with the actors, and I think it's in conjunction with the movie. Did you see that one, Laura? No, when did that one come in? You said just, just now? I didn't. Yeah. Who sent that? Um, I, I saw it flow through. Yeah, that yeah. came at 6 o'clock. Right, thank you for correcting me, Kevin. Of course we do. We have two, two performing and quantum power players I think came before us because they were doing a parking lot. Um, it, it was more of a shameless plug for them. Yes, it's a, <laughs> and I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I was a theater kid forever, so shame on me for not, yes, definitely <laughs> plug them. Who was that? I'm sorry, who was that one from? Quantum power players. <laughs> That's the email address. It says Quanta Power Plays because I don't see it. It's got a, the subject line is Quanta Power, additional F. Yep. Can you forward it to me? Because I don't see it yet. I sent it to it 606. Yep. Huh. Okay. I will look at that Monday. I don't have any attachment. There it is. I don't have any attachments. That's just the thing on the bottom. Right. Yeah, I don't have it either. I'll send it to everybody right now. Carrie and I'll send it um, to everybody. Yeah, I, I didn't know what I figured we'd talk about it tonight. I didn't know what they wanted to do or so they wanna but when is it on Halloween? Yeah. Well it does not look like the rest, so I mean it, so maybe that's some um we can hmm. Everybody doesn't have it, so I don't want to. Um, I'm sending it to everybody right now. Okay. Thank you. So they want to show a movie. All right, so they're still outdoors um, with the actors. So it'll be the parking lot and on the front porch. Um, so they're. Tomorrow. So now then with the with step two, they could have a maximum of well, 
venue capacity increased to 50%. I don't know how we calculated that with the parking lot. Um, I guess we go on spaces. Um, yeah, they said they were going to do pods like they did last time. Okay. Probably very similar. Okay. Okay. And so, and folks would be sitting next to their, right. There'd be parking yeah. elsewhere and sitting. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they got to park at Harrow's, walk down. Yep. Everyone will have their pod. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that sounds, you know, on the, on the face of this, that sounds, that sounds, sounds good. Um, and good for them for trying to do something. And that might be a nice thing with Halloween, with trick or treating yeah. being compromised. It's a nice alternative yeah. um, <laughs> to, um, to, to watch those, those movies. Um, not too scary. I don't like scary ones. So. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fun. I might do that. Okay. So do uh, they need to follow up or uh, would they work with you, Paula? Or I, you I think, yeah, it, Laura, if I'm correct, that you and I will be working together on this to make sure that all the COVID I's and T's of, mm -hmm. are done and crossed, respectively. Yep. Same okay. thing we did last night. I'll do the um, form, send it over to you, and then we'll discuss. Sounds good to me. That's the cover, okay. sheet, the cover sheet thing that Rick put together. Okay, got it. Great. Thank you both. And then um, um, there was another one. Um, oh, the chamber has a few things. Um, that'll probably come in on civic function permits. They want to do Saturday sidewalk sales. Uh, All right, good. And uh, a Santa parade. You were on those, right, Laura? Santa parade, Saturday sidewalk sales, and tree lighting. It, did you send those over after six as well, or is that the one that Lisa Egan sent over late? Yeah, Lisa Lisa Egan had sent those. Ooh, creepy music. Oh, <laughs> I like it. Sorry, that was my house. <laughs> okay, so we've got some activities and, and, you know, the guidelines have opened up even a little more. Um, we'll say at the same time that, you know, case counts are going up. There are 708 positives tonight. Um, so, um, you know, I think we need to continue to be vigilant as people keep, as people start congregating more, the risk goes up. So, um, and on Monday about um, reposting the mask, masks stuff on the website. I didn't, haven't gone back to check to see if, if, it, if it's there, but she said she was going to take care of it. Great. Thank you. Um, anything else people want to raise on COVID? Questions, answers, worries? Can it go away? I know. <laughs> I know. Not anytime soon. Mm -mm. Nope. But, um, Okay, so next item, Board of Health Vacancy Updates, uh, we've already covered, but just formally, right? So we're welcoming Jerry as our new associate member, and we're welcoming Rick in his uh, capacity now as a, a new full member. And um, congratulations to both of you. Thank you for stepping up. And um, thank you again to the board, for the Board of Selectmen, Select Board, for, um, for moving on that to, to fill, that, fill those vacancies for us. So. And okay, so discussion of how the board plans to review the document draft minutes. Everybody got their thumb drive? <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> so thank you for pulling that together, Jane. Yeah. That was awesome. Glad to do it. Yeah. Um, really? <laughs> <laughs> 
I know, you know, lots of people, Jean has worked hard, Laura's worked hard, and, you know, Jackie, and I don't know who else have worked really hard to, to help us, as I said to, to, to Jean earlier, is, you know, help us get out of this hole. Um, <laughs> and, and I think that this is, uh, you know, this is great. So our next meeting is the 8th, and we called it specifically to address minutes. Um, I did post us, I think I posted us already, and I included COVID on there as 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 normal, um, because I figured we'd want to talk about it. But really, our intent is just to get together and to go through minutes. Um, my thought on how this would work would be that folks would be able to review and return with comments um, you know, early in the week, maybe Tuesday-ish, if possible, um, so that staff have a chance to um, figure out where we are on those. And then, ideally, there will be some that we would be able to say, yes, everybody's all set on, you know, these eight sets of minutes. So we can just vote to approve. And then maybe there's a little bit of discussion that needs to happen on a few other sets. Um, we'll see, but it, you know, I would like to try and see if we can um, finish them all uh, on, on Thursday. Um, can I ask a question? Please. I don't have um, a thumb drive actually, so will I be- They're on the shared guys... server, Laura. Okay, great, thank you. So, so just um, so we're clear, so we would go through that, there were about 15 or 20 or something like that. And um, should we, Jean, um, you know, if we have comments, make tracking comments, and then, and then we should send those back to you, like in an email? Is that what we should do? You can do it. However, whatever is the easiest for you, um, I'm I'm guessing there probably isn't going to be a whole lot of comments. Um, because many it, of us weren't even there. When, right, when right. There. So um, little typos and and that kind of thing format. Um, that's what I'm anticipating. So definitely look at them. Um, definitely put your comments. Um, you can email them back to me, no problem. Um, and then if we look at one set of minutes and it looks fine, should we should we say this looks fine and send it to you or should we just not? Should we only be sending you ones we have comments on? I think it would be easier to just send me the ones, send me your comments. So if you don't send me any comments for, you know, March 16th. Uh, Presume it's fine. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just go with what you have with track changes. And um, it's going to be a little tricky because it's a busy week next week, but I'll figure it out somehow. Um, <laughs> there's night meetings every night next week, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. I may have to um, multitask. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, that's, um, okay. that's okay. Definitely. We'll figure it out and get it done. And, um, and yeah, if you could get them to me by, you know, Tuesday noontime, say, then I'll crank through them. And um, and create a final, a best and final version. I'm not going to show all the track changes. I don't think anybody really cares. No. We want to see the final synthesized document with the changes mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. Clean. Mm -hmm. That's that's my goal. So there'd be another set of of 19 minutes. That'll be the clean board board of health um, uh, drafts. And would we get those, um, I know this is now pushing it, but do we get those like um, the morning of the 8th so that essentially at the meeting we could say, we've, we've looked at them, they look fine. I mean, it could be a five minute agenda item theoretically. Because okay. um, yeah. otherwise, how would we, if, if you came with the final drafts to the meeting, you'd have to go through 18 of them, you know, whatever it was. It seems like that would take forever. Right. If, if we could have an opportunity to quickly review them prior to the meeting, we might just be able to do it on mass and be done yep. with it. Mm -hmm. Unless you want me to just come with track changes. 
that would be kind of messy. Uh, I, personally, I, I think that would just be too laborious. Yeah, to go spend time to going do a through. screenshot on and scroll through, and yeah. some of them are quite long. The uh, the verbatim ones are, yeah, you know, novels. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So, Rick, are you suggesting that the on um, on the eighth that they resend out everything with the changes made to them? Is that what you're saying? Right. That we we would get all our recommended changes to Gene by Tuesday at noon. Yeah. Okay. And then by Wednesday night or Thursday morning, Gene would get back to us uh, the final drafts, not with all the track yeah. changes, just the final drafts. Yeah. If we could, you know, review them uh, before the meeting, then we could come to the meeting and only have to discuss if there were questions on, on a few of them and then just approve them all. As opposed to, Otherwise, if, if Jean, if we were to first see the final draft at the meeting, um, I don't know how we could process 18 of them at the meeting. No, you, you definitely wouldn't want to do that. The, the only reason I bring it up is the track changes is actually very helpful in that regard. So what you don't want to have to do is reread the document. Right? Mm -hmm. You just want to read what was changed from the last time you read the document. So mm -hmm. I, I think the track changes make, simplifies that on, a, on Thursday afternoon walking into the meeting. So you, you're going through and you can see, oh, no changes to this one, on to the next. It'll take you two seconds to, to see that there were no changes um, to that one. You can go right to the next and you say, oh, red line, here's a, here's a track change here. They, it was that, now it's this, okay. So I, I think you'll, from a board standpoint, I, I think everyone will be able to go through it faster actually with the track changes. No, that's an idea. It, that, that might work too. Hmm. We could do that. What do others think? I'm I'm okay with that too. Yep. I'm okay. I'm happy with that. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Okay. That. Right, then we can verify the changes of me. Yes, or wait, why did you change that? But yeah. yes, and and you know, right. move quickly. Yep. Okay. Okay. Good. Um now logistically, um because I, I I did a little bit of research on um okay. We have um, largely new members on the board. So many of these minutes, um, board members will be voting on and that meetings they hadn't attended. The only one that has is Kevin. Yep. And so Kevin as an associate, um, elevated. where it stands right now, wouldn't be voting. Oh. So this- You can't elevate me unless I one know. of the three of you don't show up. <laughs> I, I was trying to figure out how to say that nicely. But. Gene, I think Gene's trying to give somebody the night off if, if they so chose it out of the three of you. <laughs> Look at Paula. She's like, yeah, I'm good. That's it. Paula had her hand up first. <laughs> oh, then Jerry, don't, you don't have to join us. And, oh, no, it has to be one of the three. Never mind. Jerry, so you the, can do what you want. But. The only problem with that is... Um, and. Gene, tell me how, how we get around. The only problem with that is if we are going to add on an agenda item to discuss at, thereafter. Yep. Then that person, um, can you can you then de-elevate me, and then that person can call in for that portion of it. So you have the three voting members in there. So that's the only that's the only thing. It, it's it's simple if we're just doing minutes, right? Yeah. But if we're, yeah, we are now should. talking about adding something in, you know, the three voting members should be the ones. Um, so it sounds like it's going to be a fairly quick process. So yeah. I'll just come. <laughs> I just yeah, want I, <laughs> I don't, well, I, again, I don't think it's a big deal that the, th that the three of you are gonna vote on minutes that you didn't attend the meeting. You know, what if I was no longer here? You would be doing right. that anyway. So it's not, it's not like you have to have somebody who was at the meeting voting for it. So right. it, I think if you're gonna add agenda items onto it, it probably would make sense to have all three of you there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And Kevin's gonna give comments anyway. So it's not like he's not, you know, we're going to get in. Feedback, right. So, okay. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, Paula. So, yeah, because we'll we'll talk about the changes on the um the scope of work for the assessment. So, we'll we'll we'll, we'll want you. You know, you want to you want to see that. So, okay. I'm happy either way. Okay. So, can I just ask how minutes typically go? I, I get the feeling that this is not how it typically goes, but what's more? No, there's nothing typical about it. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so for like this meeting, how would minutes be derived? So it, it, it has changed. We each would take turns taking minutes. Now we have recordings and admin staff who have been fantastic doing it. And it's just so much quicker, Absolutely. so much quicker. Hopefully, hopefully we will get into a routine where yes. um, like the minutes of the last meeting were great. I thought, you know, nicely yes. concise, you can read them. Um, hopefully we would just get to a point where part of every meeting is just approving the minutes of the previous yep. meeting. Yep. And we, you know, but this backlog is just uh, because of a lot that. of factors. Yep. Uh, Jerry, no, how this normally goes is we meet once a month. <laughs> And then, and then we have a full month to just go over <laughs> one set of minutes to then approve at the next meeting. Instead, we were meeting three times a week. We were taking the minutes and we were the ones trying to get the minutes then in a proper format so everyone else could review them and you can imagine we got behind. Yeah. Because the guidance kept changing too and there was continual new things to be done with COVID. Right. So that no matter what, there was, it, was, it was just not possible to- Unprecedented times. So please don't run away. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, 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 I want not. Awesome. So a big thank you to staff. Um, yes. Jean, Jackie, big, big thank you for taking that on. Yeah, we have, we have a plan. We have the 19 that hopefully we can get done um, Thursday night. And Jackie's got another, I don't know, 10 or 12 that she's working on. So that will cover us. Okay. Bring us up to date. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Um, and then, so moving on, last item is uh, just our meeting schedule and agendas. So uh, the I, I did agendas for tonight, the 8th and the 15th. Um, it sounds like I, I need to modify the, the 8th to you know, bring back in the uh, needs assessment piece as a discussion item. And um, And then on the 15th, uh, as was mentioned earlier, the town manager had asked if he could have some time with us. Um, and this fits nicely with other things we wanna talk about. So that's great. Um, sounds like, um, I think it would be worthwhile to hear from Laura Jam about anything that she's got going with the election. Yeah. Um, so that's great that she wants to join us. So that's on the 15th. And then that I had also put on tentatively on the 15th for reorganization. I figured that would give everybody a little bit of time to breathe. Um, so that's how they, those are set for now. Is that amenable? Are there other items that people want to add to agendas? Uh, the one thing we had talked about was um, what what we talked earlier about was um, defining uh, the role of us of supplementary services, what that carve out might be. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Rick. I think I have that. Yeah, I have that on this page, but yes. Okay. Um, so changing the eighth, I will send that to you all. And, and then what we had talked about was trying to meet twice a month. Um, so we added this meeting on the 8th solely to deal with minutes really, but you know, some other things come up, so let's get them handled. Um, but then we talked about meeting uh, twice a month and that would be the first and the third Thursdays of the month. Amenable? Yeah. Okay, so then our next meeting would be November 5th. And then we would meet November 5th and November 19th. Um, and then, yeah, same thing for December. So that's the rhythm that we've, um, we're trying to establish. Uh, command will meet on the Monday preceding those meetings. And uh, it's up that um, it's switched this, they've asked to switch it to the fifth um, for this, this next one. Um, I continue to say I'm happy to attend command on behalf of the board. Thank you, Paula, for stepping in for me. But I also That's don't want to, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to hog it if somebody else wants to go. <laughs> um, 
that's fine. So, okay, so I will plan to attend command on the 5th. And hey, I'll are you up for that? I mean, yeah, I'll be good. Sure? Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's a nice way to kind of baby step myself back in. Um, <laughs> um, and um, so the fifth, and and then we'll we'll roll through with that. And I think that's all. Any other? So I'm issues? not going to pull. Oh, I'm not yeah. going to post this agenda. You're going to send me a new one for the um, 15th and for the 8th. I'm going to, yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. I'm going to modify them. Um, after okay. I have my dinner, I'm going to modify them and I'll send them to you. So those can post. And um, thank you, Laura. And we will um, we'll hope they stay put. We'll hope that cases just kind of reach a new little level of a new little level of plateau that's right that's right um and see okay um motion to adjourn i cannot do that you can do that congratulations <laughs> rick can i just ask one question before what? you guys adjourn I, I wasn't sure where we ended up with select board meetings is there still board of health attending select board oh okay They've been asking me, and that's fine, but I'm happy if people want to take turns and visit them too, that's fine. <laughs> okay, as long as as long as that's covered, I just wasn't sure yeah. that was. Okay. I, 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 I can do a two minute bullet, but I'm happy to, to share. Does anybody else want to go? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, thank you. And you know, something popped into my head and it's gone. So I'll just think of it another time oh i know i was i was thinking that it was i was missing my my jt cue that it's time to go <laughs> oh <laughs> jt buddy come here <laughs> i must be early <laughs> come over here people want to say hi we can go in pjs <laughs> oh, hey dude <laughs> how are you guy you say hi <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> all right all right here's the cue so, to go um i heard a motion to adjourn and i will second that motion you. uh roll call carrie yes all yes rick yes yes excellent <laughs> congratulations on your first meeting jerry thank you for being here <laughs> thank Take you care. great night everybody bye kevin bye bye everybody good night, night. Good night, night time, bye. thank you <laughs>